Restoration of what is essentially a deep hole in the ground within an area of outstanding natural beauty is a particular challenge faced by limestone quarry operators in the stunning Derbyshire Dales. It is a challenge that Tarmac faces repeatedly as one of the largest operators in the area, and one that has promoted the proposals showcased in the planned restoration of its three quarries, Tunstead, Balladin and Dean. Well, what you will see here in, in the long term is this will be a large flat floor at the bottom of the quarry. Not much we can do about that, but it will be restored back to grassland with some ponds, dry stone walls, it'll be divided up into fields. But crucially, all the perimeter faces will be restored to some degree. Some, like behind me, will be rather more dramatic than others, but with the whole of, of the, fen the faces and benches will have been treated. The weathering will take its effect, roll over slopes, everything will roll down into the quarry floor. Calcareous grassland is a major component of Tarmac's restoration plans, but they also include a mixture of improved grassland to support sheep grazing and unimproved grassland for biodiversity. The plan also includes woodland, typical of the Derbyshire landscape. Dry stone walls will punctuate the landscape to create a field pattern, allowing mixed land use, including traditional farming and areas kept for nature conservation. All three quarries are situated beside triple SIs and planned restoration will complement these. Although more difficult to achieve in limestone quarries, tarmac is restoring progressively where possible and treating faces and benches in some areas of the quarries while still working in others. Raymond Brown's Brickworth Quarry near Salisbury in Wiltshire produces around 120,000 tonnes of soft sand a year and recent permission to extend the quarry will secure continuity of supply for the next nine or ten years. The extension area is currently commercial conifer plantation, home to a wide variety of invertebrates, mammals, birds and reptiles, but it was originally ancient woodland and the soils carry a rich seed bank. So this site has been wooded for about 600 years. Uh, more recently, in the 1950s, deciduous trees were felled and replaced with conifers. Um, so the ultimate restoration scheme for here involves the direct placement of those important soils back for restoration and the ultimate planting of upwards of, of 25,000 deciduous trees over that period. With such a mix of habitats and wildlife to protect, the regulatory structure around Brickworth Quarry is complex. Advanced tree planting aims to mitigate temporary habitat loss for the site's dormice and new ponds have been built for the great crested newts, with over 660 already translocated to compensation areas. Extraction and restoration will be managed in progressive phases over eight areas of the site. The complexity of timing each phase to allow a consistent supply of sand to be extracted, but also allowing access to the next phase for ecology and soil management, is managed with an extensive Gantt chart. The compilation of the Gantt chart has then meant that we can achieve an 86% direct placement of poor soils into our phase restoration. Planting of native deciduous species will extend across the whole site, taking in previous worked and restored land, as well as the extension area. In all, some 42 hectares of broadleaved woodland will be created, a net gain of more than five and a half hectares. A habitat management plan created by Bioscan UK for Lafarge Calden details a long-term plan for habitat restoration opportunities within the company's landholding beyond the quarry. Some of these opportunities involve changing the management of field units to improve the biodiversity of existing habitat, the revision of grazing schedules, weed control and scrub management. Other planned activities include the active restoration of grassland sites using locally sourced seed, the ultimate objectives being to create a contiguous landscape of quality habitats and an overall net gain in priority grassland habitat, despite quarrying activity in part of the Caldendales Triple SI. Management activities will be monitored and reported annually by Lafarge and its partner organisations. Landscape scale restoration isn't widely seen in highly populated Berkshire, yet the transformation planned for the Fleet Hill farm area of Semex Eversley Quarry puts it firmly in that category. The restored site, which sits on the Berkshire-Hampshire border, will extend a 10-kilometre corridor of valuable habitats along the Blackwater Valley. 
With extraction completed, the Fleet Hill Farm and Manor Farm areas are now ready to be restored, and Semex is working with the RSPB to create a network of priority habitats for wildlife that can also be enjoyed by local people. People think of Berkshire and Hampshire as being sort of crowded, um, but here you've got that sense of space, you've got some open areas, and what we want to do as part of our ongoing relationship with Semex as part of the restoration of the site, actually going to be creating new rights of way, um, new visitor facilities. So it's not just going to be about wildlife, but it's also going to be about people because we want to create a place where people can come and actually enjoy and experience not just the wildlife, but just the atmosphere of it. While wetland will be the primary habitat created, the plan is to provide a mosaic of different environments. Wet grassland studded with small pools, extensive rebed wet woodland, flood meadow, lowland meadow and ponds, all linked together by the Blackwater Valley connecting the wider landscape. The site is designed to support a broad range of wetland priority species and there are high hopes that it will attract bittern and provide a vital stepping stone between the other sites to the east and west. Extraction and restoration at Earls Barton Quarry in Northamptonshire offers Hanson Aggregates a real opportunity to improve the biodiversity of what is currently an intensively farmed landscape. The company's vision for the two square kilometre site is to create a natural river floodplain, restoring connectivity with the River Neen to sustainably maintain a new wetland habitat for wildlife. This landscape will merge into farmland on higher ground that will be restored to habitats with higher ecological value than those currently present. Extraction is planned in phases, integrated with restoration working field by field. Hedgerows that were previously cut low and full of gaps have been allowed to grow, screening operations from the three villages close to the site and improving habitat in the process. As extraction is completed in each area, these hedges will be transplanted into the restored site, with a wider variety of hedgerow species to fill any gaps and a far richer habitat. The net benefit will be to improve both the agricultural restoration in terms of biodiversity uh, compared to the, the original site and add a, a lot of wetland features which weren't here originally, uh, well not for many centuries anyway and actually reinstate a wetland alongside the river corridor and uh, enhance the river habitat itself. An old railway line and the Neen Valley Way run through the site and the plan is to restore and improve public access with a network of footpaths and cycleways. The habitats proposed in Hansen's restoration plan already exist in the nearby Upper Neen Valley Gravel Pits SSSI, a chain of restored sites to which Hansen has already contributed some 83%. Once restored, the Ellsbarton Quarry site will add a further 150 hectares to this. Dry Rig and Arkow quarries operated by Tarmac sit in the heart of the Yorkshire Dales National Park, producing Silurian gritstone used in road construction. The planned restoration of these sites, due for completion in 2021 and 2031 respectively, is designed to not only fit seamlessly into the local landscape, but also to enhance its biodiversity by creating new areas of priority habitats. Central to both quarries is the Swarthmore SSSI, which supports one of only a few remaining raised bog habitats in the country. A fen that once ran around the moor has been lost through agricultural intensification and drainage, and the restoration at both quarries is intended to recreate the fen system close to its original location. The detailed restoration plan for Dry Rig Quarry is for there to be a large deep water body at the base of the quarry faces that you can see behind me, and that will grade into an area that has been infilled which will support the alkaline fen vegetation. The water from the new lake will overspill into the fen area to sustain the fen and then it will pass out into the phase one area behind me before discharging off site into the local water courses. Phase one of the restoration of dry rigs saw establishment of a trial area in 2009 where planting and management techniques could be tested. A former stockpile was excavated to form a bowl to hold rainwater, augmented with water pumped from the bottom of the quarry. This has shown that the alkaline fen system requires a specific depth of water, so various weirs and sluices have been implemented in the restoration of the main quarry to control water levels.
Similarly, the restoration at Arkell will see quarry faces leading into a wetland habitat with open water bodies, which will in turn lead into the alkaline fen areas. Thank you.